Coming up on Inside the Summit League, beyond the floor and behind the scenes at the Basketball Championships. An inside look from the arena makeover to the Volunteer Army to the TV trailer as the tournament sets another new attendance record this year. Hello, welcome to the show. The Summit League Basketball Tournament is done, but the season continues now for seven Summit League teams. Between the NCAA and the NIT and the WBI and the CBI and the CIT, the league is going to be very well represented this weekend. Three women's teams have qualified for postseason play. Summer League Tournament champion South Dakota State is headed to Corvallis, Oregon. The Jackrabbits got a 14 seed in the NCAA Tournament. They will play three seed Oregon State in the first round. That game is at 4 o'clock Central Time on Friday and is set to be televised on ESPN2. Summer League Tournament runner-up and regular season champion South Dakota has been chosen to play in the WNIT. The Coyotes will host Creighton in a first-round game on Thursday at the Dakota Dome in Vermilion. And the third women's team to play in the postseason is Oral Roberts. They are in the WBI, the Women's Basketball Invitational. It's a 16-team tournament, and the Golden Eagles will play Texas State on Wednesday night in the first round. Meanwhile, four Summer League men's teams are still alive. North Dakota State, the automatic qualifier to the big dance. The Bison will play Gonzaga in the late game on Friday night. It is set to tip off at 8.50 Central Time. TV coverage on TNT for North Dakota State. South Dakota State, the regular season co-champion in the Summit League, and that gets the Jackrabbits into the NIT. 32 teams in that tournament. South Dakota State will take on Colorado State on Wednesday night. That is set to start at 9 o'clock Central Time on ESPNU. Oral Roberts is playing on Wednesday night as well. The Eagles are in the CBI. The uh, Oral Roberts will play at home, hosting UC Santa Barbara in the first round. That's a 7 o'clock Central Time start. And last but not least, Fort Wayne is played in the CIT, the CollegeInsider.com tournament. This is a 32-team deal, and the Mastodons are playing at Evansville on Wednesday night in the first round there. Up next, the record-breaking attendance numbers for the Summer League Basketball Championships and behind the scenes at the tournament. The floor goes down, lights go up. we got a cool look at the setup and the execution of a championship weekend. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back. A lot goes on during the week leading up to the Summit League Basketball Tournament, starting with the tip-off press conference. And the word exciting got thrown around a number of times as the tournament made the move this year to the new 12,000-seat Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. Here are two of the people that were more excited than anybody else, Summit League Commissioner Tom Duple and Wes Hall of the Sioux Falls Sports Authority. This is uh, definitely an exciting time for us uh, here. You know, we started out uh, a number of years ago with, with a pretty good basketball tournament. Um, we were very successful, had some very great games in, in different venues uh, in Fort Wayne and Kansas City and Tulsa. And so we came to Sioux Falls with a very successful and good tournament. And what's happened over those six years is we've turned it into an event. An event where there's media interest, fan interest, and corporate sponsorship support. It has really become nationally known. Last year at this time, on a Friday, we opened up the USA Today, and there it was, Bigger in Dallas, Summit League, you know, March's best kept secret. It's truly become an event, but now we're turning that into an experience. To have that experience of moving into this new arena with all the amenities that go with it, is something that our student athletes are going to really be surprised and look forward to. I think if we have one word to describe what we're all feeling right now is a lot of excitement. Um, we're all looking forward to seeing what it's going to look like with 9,000, 10,000 potential fans in that building this weekend. Um, it's been something that we've been building to ever since last year's tournament. Uh, it's been a year-round process of planning, uh, getting this building operational and getting things, all the details planned out. Over the past six years, uh, we've had tremendous success. Uh, you know, 2013, we put 44,000 plus fans into the old arena over four days. 
Uh, within those six years, we've set the top six total attendance marks for the Summit League tournament. And this year, we're going to crush every record that we've ever set. And they were crushed. The total attendance this year for the men's tournament alone was 35,612. That's nearly 12,000 more than the previous record that was set in 2013. If you combine the men's and the women's attendance this year at the basketball championships, it was just over 60,000. That breaks the previous record by over 15,000 this year at the basketball championships. Well, Mark Lewis is the vice president of championships for the NCAA. He was on hand and was just as jazzed as everybody else to see some great basketball get played in this new venue. I think if you can't get excited to play in this arena, you, you got to go see a doctor because this, this atmosphere, you know, you're talking about 10,000 people potentially for a conference tournament. That's going to put it in one of the top 10 rankings for men, top five for women in Division I. Those are both impressive numbers. And to be part of that as a player is going to be special. And um, it's a competitive conference. You know, when you talk to fans, when you talk to coaches, ADs, everybody feels like they have a chance to win this thing, and that's, that's special too. Um, it, having a game in doubt is what makes it fun and exciting. To see who's going to rise up and get that break and win a championship, that's, that's what you hope for as a player, and they've achieved that here. So it's going to be a great tournament, I think. Well, it turned out to be true, and while we are slapping backs, we have to give a big thank you to the arena staff who transformed the place from a hockey and concert venue into a building that was ready for basketball. Changeovers are something we do all the time. I mean, we, we go from hockey to concerts to rodeos to monster truck to trade shows, dinners, banquets. You know, we do it all here and have done it so far. So if we had to, we could do it overnight. Uh, we were lucky we had a couple of days, so it, it took about two days. Um, you know, you don't want to work your people to death, and March is a busy month for us, so what makes this building successful is our people, and uh, our ops operations department, our event services department, marketing, all of them have been working some pretty long hours to, to make it a success. Well, coming up next, to pull off a tournament like this, you got to have somebody running the show, and you will hear from her coming up next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back to Inside the Summit League. Well, Mindy K. Larson is the overseer of all that goes on at any Summit League championship, and a ton of work goes into orchestrating a tournament of this size. Larson is the league's senior associate commissioner, and she and her people get to see four months' worth of planning go into action when the basketball championships finally roll around. We start uh, planning meetings in uh, December. As soon as we come back from Thanksgiving break, we do our first planning meeting and start setting everything up that we can and then we meet all the way up until we all leave for Sioux Falls. So there's a lot of stuff that happens and lots of teleconference calls since we aren't on site. So we have to do a lot of coordinations over the phone and talking to all our sponsors and to the Sioux Falls Sports Authority and then um, we come out in stages. We send two people out on Tuesday, two people out on Wednesday, and then the rest of the staff comes on Thursday. And it's all hands on deck for this week. So we shut down the office and leave a note on the door and we all come out here and, until this is finished. We have our staff all assigned to different areas. So we keep two people on the scores table to help with crowd control, any officials problems, any bench problems. We have people stationed in merchandise. We have people assigned to signage, making sure that all the signage and the awards stay put the whole time. So we're all just kind of assigned to our areas, making sure everything works, and then I'm kind of going around making sure they're all taken care of, and if they can't leave and I need to run, do something. So we're just kind of coordinating each other and troubleshooting and making sure everything's running smoothly. Well, it also takes an army of volunteers to help out from tickets to ushers to security to the concessions to the host for the teams. They all help out in as many areas as possible to make this tournament run smoothly. There's about 15 different jobs that we actually man at the tournament. Um, it can be from like some of the team ben bench. Uh, we've got the locker rooms, we've got ushering, we've got volunteer hospitality, VIP hospitality, media hospitality. We are back in the media room. Um, we've got floaters that go around that give our volunteers that are staffed at different positions breaks. Um, we've got the ball boys. 
I mean, it's just the whole gamut of things. This year we have about 150 with the new venue. We usually use about 50 a day, and so we space those 150 volunteers out for the different sessions during the whole tournament. I mean, without the volunteers, we maybe wouldn't have as much success as we have had in the past years. It's just a good group of people that do keep coming back year after year. We do have a lot of local volunteers from some of the surrounding communities as well, but we have some that come from Iowa. We have one that comes as far as Kansas City, and actually she's been here with us since the beginning, so she's been a seven-year volunteer as well in Minnesota. It's all about the fan experience and the student athlete experience. We've got people coming into our city. We just want to make a good show, take good care of them, and just have a, a, a nice experience with the, the Summit Tournament. All right, coming up later, we will experience the tournament through the pictures of a very talented Summit League photographer. But up next, the motion pictures. Midco Sports Network is the TV home for the Summit League Basketball Tournament. We'll go behind the cameras and in the production trailer when we come back. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, welcome back. Midco Sports Network has been proud to be the TV home for the quarterfinals and the semifinals again this year at the Summit League Basketball Championships. It takes 40 people working 7 a.m. to midnight for three days in a row to get it done. Here's a brief look at what goes on to get all of that onto your screen. 15. All right. Have a good show, everybody. Stand by. Summit oh, League open and red. Sound right. full. Nine, in eight, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Roll red, sound red. The 10 count before the open, you're stressed, you're excited. I think you have about every emotion. It actually feels to me like you're playing in the game. You've got that emotion and that, that pit in your stomach that you're like, okay, it's, re it's go time, we're ready to go. It's exciting. I mean, uh, you do get a kind of a rush of nerves and excitement all coming kind of at the same time. You know, the build up to the game is 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 different. Everybody kind of gets excited in their own way, but right before we get going, everybody kind of gets antsy and you kind of start feeling, all right, it's time to go. You know, this is what we've been working on all, all day. Now it's game time. Let's get into our groove and get things done. I think a lot of people sit at home on their couch and TV just happens and it's magical. And they don't get to see the number of people it takes to pull off the type of quality broadcast that Midco, Midco Sportsnet does. It takes a lot of people, it takes a lot of talent, and it takes a lot of long hours to produce a, a tournament this with this magnitude. Yeah, on a normal game day, uh, it depends on what time it starts. Like uh, the Summit Leagues here, they start at around noon. So that means that everybody's on site around seven in the morning, you know. There's a lot of uh, cables that, uh, we pull out uh, in the Premier Center here, it's not as bad because we pre-wired it, or Mid-Continent pre-wired the, the venue for us here, so that kind of makes it a little easier. It knocks some time off on setup. But then again, you still have your inside the trailer, you have to put everything together and uh, get everything turned on, get everything adjusted. There's roughly 25 positions for our assembly broadcast. We have the front bench, which is, you know, the the technical director, the director, the producer. We have two people in graphics. We have one person who calls up the graphics, one person who runs stats. We have two replays. Uh, we have three engineers on board. We have seven camera operators, including, actually, yes, I think it might even be eight camera operators, including our jib camera, which is a nice long arm camera that will extend to about 25 feet over. Uh, we have you know two studio hosts, two on air guys um, at a time, sideline reporter. We got a floor director up top. During the game, it's the producer's job to kind of quarterback the broadcast, I would say. Um, you're kind of in charge of, you know, the, of the show. Like Toby told me a couple weeks ago, you know, it's your show. And I don't really think that, but at the same time, it kind of is. You're kind of dictating what's going to go on the air. My job, I look at my job as like an air traffic controller is at an airport. I take in information from the producer, from cameras, from CG, from everywhere around me, and make decisions as to what cameras get taken, what CGs need to go with them, uh, what replay, where it's at, 
okay, what are we coming up next? Are we going to the set? Are we going down to the guys at the announcer's desk? Are we in game action? And so, yeah, it's just, it's calling the cameras and knowing what elements have to go in and listening to the producer whose show this actually is. And I'm just the conduit that explains it to everybody. Stand by camera one, take camera one. Stand by red, animate, roll red. We play the last play. Stand by to come back to camera two. And let's go back to camera two. Yeah, the director would tell me what cameras to take and what replays to take. Sometimes the producer will chime in on replays too. Um, and the way the switcher works, the way we have this one set up is on the lower part is where I punch all my cameras and stuff like that. When I affect to a replay, I go up to ME2. And that's where I could go from different replays to different replays and dissolve between them. Then up on ME1 is where I'll do special effects like boxes, two box, three boxes. For the tournament this weekend, we'll have, I think it's around seven or eight man cameras, 10 total. I'll have over 50 effects for the tournament this weekend. So that's quite a few between sponsor, billboards, um, team effects, team caps, and uh, two boxes, three boxes. We'll, we'll push the envelope this weekend. As a Dino One operator, um, one of my main tasks is to watch the game and follow it and to save like the plays, anything, moments, certain types of reaction by players, a lot of emotion. My job is to find those things through all the camera angles and save them. Uh, you know, as things go along, there's a lot of things people don't get to see during a production. There's a lot of stuff that camera guys are working for and are doing, and you don't get to see a lot of this stuff in, in that production. And as a dyno operator, you get the chance to put all those things together and kind of showcase it at the very end. They've always said that uh, there's two two big things, and, and they're about 50% and 50%. There's 50% audio and 50% video. So what we try to do is we try to follow the video. So whatever whatever you see, I make sure the sound follows it so it looks natural. So you, if you're seeing somebody talking, we want to make sure you can hear that. Or if you see a basketball going down the, the court, make sure you can hear that too. Whenever you have a job where you're you don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I have to go to work tomorrow. You know, that's you know, that's how I know you you love your job. I mean, like this week, for example, it's going to be a 70, 80 hour work week. But you know, I'm not complaining too much. I mean, you spend a lot of time together. I mean, you can make a case that you see these guys more than you see your own family because you're doing you know one, two, three live games a week. You know, we get to show up and work with the same people uh, a lot of the games, um, and we've kind of grew to be a family. To be cliche and say that we're a family, but we have. Everybody knows everybody, everybody knows what's going on in everybody's life all the time it seems like and we show up, we work together, we have a good time, we get along and we put together a good product. Well up next we go into all the commotion and stop the motion. The tournament captured in photographs from a guy with a great eye named Dave Egan. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back to Inside the Summit League. We will get to baseball and softball in the spring sports seasons. Coming up next week, we leave you this week with the Summit League Basketball Championships through the camera lens of Dave Egan. Here is the Summit League Tournament through his eyes.